first thing we want to make sure we're clear on is how does the COVID-19 virus spread? And particularly, we want to understand how it is carried through the HVAC system and its role in contributing to the spread of the COVID-19 virus. What's interesting about this particular virus is it's an extremely small virus. It's about 0.12 microns, which is really teeny tiny. Uh, but it doesn't travel by itself. So there's two way, two main ways that we people get infected. One is through uh, what's called an aerosol, which is a particle like fog, for example, is an aerosol that just dances through the air. And the smaller the particle, the longer it can stay in the air. And so the instructions that we have to maintain a six foot distance are to, are to help prevent that coughing, sneezing transmission. And the cleaning, the extra cleaning that we're doing, washing of hands and cleaning surfaces, is to take care of preventing those things from contacting that way. So how does the HVAC system contribute to this? Well, think about the HVAC system as moving air through that space. And if those particulates of the virus are aerosolized, which means they become now entrained in the air and they're light enough and small enough to be carried through the air, those things can be picked up in the HVAC system, carried through that system, and transmitted to other places, other locations, even outside of the room, potentially where an infected occupant is, into another space and potentially affecting another occupant. So with HVAC systems, we can attack both of these transmission methods if we strategically use the tools in our toolbox. In responding to infectious diseases, especially in a pandemic situation like this, we certainly need to consider operating our HVAC systems differently. Most systems are designed for a small amount of ventilation air. But during this time, we wanna be able to increase that ventilation air. Bringing more fresh outside air in helps to dilute and take care of the particles that can be spread. And so thinking about systems today, as they operate, we need to increase the amount of outside air ventilation. One of the side effects of doing that is maybe perhaps a loss of humidity control. That's a very challenging situation uh, that because there, it, you don't just add more air, right? The systems are designed to handle a certain amount. The fans are designed to handle a certain amount. The ductwork is designed to uh, handle a certain amount. And so also the coils, the heat transfer coils, are meant to provide both humidity and temperature control. So if you increase the outside air, you have many things that you have to look at in that system that really should be checked out by a qualified professional. One of the areas that we can change in air systems to help reduce the spread of the airborne coronavirus involves several air cleaning technologies. Now, one that exists in every system is a filter. A filter is an inactive method of being able to reduce that. And what do I mean by inactive? The only thing the filter can do is potentially trap particles that contain the virus. There are additional air cleaning technologies that can actually inactivate the virus what are called active type uh, air cleaning methods. And that would include uh, ultraviolet germicidal irradiation, UVGI. Another technology that's a little newer to the block is called bipolar ionization or BPI. Bipolar ionization is a totally different technique, but just as effective as UV in the long term, where we flood the entire room with positive and negative ions. And those ions will react with not only VOCs in the air, but also viruses, bacteria, mold. 
And what's really great about it is actually there's two things that are really great about the technology. One, it's not harmful to humans. So you can use it all day long and nobody will, will notice except for the fact that the air might smell a little fresher. Uh, but two, it gets everywhere. So it will handle things like uh, the bottom of a doorknob. Compared to the UV uh, lamps, for example, if you have it in a, on a ceiling, it's still not gonna do like the bottom of a doorknob, the bottom of a table. And they constantly collect and they render inactive the virus. They also help coalesce particles into larger particles. So think about small pieces of dust that are floating around in the airstream. We can use those ions to help coalesce those particles of dust with particulates of the virus and they become larger particles now making the filter that's already in the system more effective at being able to trap some of those components. Maintenance practices need to be done more meticulously so the, uh, for example, with filters, the filters have even a, even low MERV rating filters will have small crevices in them that can uh, capture the small aerosol particles that the viruses are attached to. So you have to be careful because when pulling out one of these filters, there may be active virus that's still on the filter. So you don't want to touch it. We need to be careful to be properly dressed in the proper personal protection equipment. And then those filters need to be bagged safely and disposed of immediately. And treated as if uh, they are infectious materials. Uh, that's the big one. Uh, cleaning situations as well. Uh, it's pretty common to take, for example, a pressure washer to clean uh, air handling equipment. One of the things that you have to be careful of with that is that with the high pressure, if there's active virus on one of the surfaces, you may actually aerosolize it and put it in the air. So you need to be careful, use low pressure or uh, hand scrubbing in order to clean the air handling. So that, that virus cannot be transmitted either by contact or through the air as that used filter is being discarded. One thing to be cognizant of with filters is filters always perform more efficiently as they start to load up. And what do I mean by lo loading up? When you put a new filter in and it's clean, it actually works better after that filter starts to get dirty and you start to collect some particles because each of those particles helps connect to other particles. And so, the first thought we have sometimes is to just immediately change all the filters and eliminate anything that might be in that existing filter. Uh, that may not be the case. And so that should be evaluated, analyzed before filters are replaced. A common uh, question that we hear is, should I just upgrade my filter? Should I go to a more efficient filter? And the guide, general, general guidance there that we would have is it depends. Uh, your system may be able to handle the additional pressure drop uh, or the filter holding requirements of higher efficiency filters, but it's possible that it may not. Uh, the fan system may not have enough power to overcome that additional resistance. And so those are things that should be analyzed by a design engineer, someone who's capable of being able to look at the HVAC system and determine if it can operate with a higher efficiency filter. For more information on air purification and air handling systems, contact your building expert at Johnson Controls. We have the technology to help you and we understand and can guide you through stimulus and other procurement approaches. We're part of your community and we're proud to help power your mission.